Hi, I'm Andre Butler. Welcome to our show today. I'm excited because I believe God's going to do something amazing in your life as a result of today's message. You know, most people are looking for change, change that sticks, change that lasts. And I believe that's true about you. Maybe you need some change in a relationship or maybe in your health or maybe in your finances, maybe in your career, or maybe just in your heart, maybe your heart broken. And you might hear me say that and say, Pastor, you're right, but you know what? My situation is impossible. It's impossible for my life to turn around in that area. And you might say that because when it comes to that relationship, all the bridges have been burned. Or when it comes to your health, the doctors say it's incurable. Or when it comes to your money, you're actually head over heels in debt. I want you to know that if that's you, there's still hope for you. You're not alone. God has actually been sitting on the bench of your life waiting for you to allow him to get in the game and make the difference that you need him to make in your life. You see, God wants to do this supernaturally, but for him to do things supernaturally in your life, you got to get closer to him. And that's why he says to you, draw nigh to me and then I'll draw nigh to you. Come close to me and then I'll come close to you. And when he comes close to you is when you can have a faith experience, a moment in time where you experience the God of the Bible in a supernatural way and you can see God bring the change that sticks in your life. So I want to challenge you today to open your heart to what God might have to say to you. You may feel like I'm already kind of close to God, but you can get closer. You may say, I'm not close to God at all. Listen and allow God to kind of show you why you need to get closer to him. Make a decision today that this problem stops now. From now on, I'm going to have the change that I want in my life. From now on, I'm going to allow God to do his part to help me live the future he has for me. So let's jump right into the message and let's enjoy what God has to say to us. So let's begin today in James chapter 4 and verse 7. It reads, So humble yourselves before God, resist the devil, and he'll flee from you. Notice this. Come close to God, and God will come close to you. Notice that scripture. When you come close to God, then God will come close to you. As I was studying that one day, a few things came to me. The first was that you can get close to God right now. Right now, you can choose to get close to God. The second one was God wants you closer to him. That's why that's in the Bible, because God is saying, come closer, get closer to me. The third is you are as close to God as you choose to be right now. That means that God is closer to some people than to others because they've chosen to be where they are. And then the last is God can do more in your life than he is right now that it is entirely up to you. Now, every once in a while, I'll see a movie where you'll have two lovers on the beach and they're running towards each other. And of course, the scene ends with them in embracing. And uh, I, as I was meditating on this, I thought about that, that this is kind of what the scripture is saying here, that when you choose to run towards God, God will run towards you and you all can come together and you'll have something I like to call a faith experience, a moment in time when you experience the God of the Bible in a supernatural way. A moment in time where God's not just someone you're talking about or someone has told you about, but someone who you're actually experiencing, someone who's actually doing something tangible in your life. And that's what God wants you to have. He wants you to have faith experiences with him. And that's why he's saying, come close to me. And so I want to take a look at some individuals in the Bible who have had faith experiences and just see the benefits of doing so. So we're going to start in Genesis chapter 12 and verse 7 with Abraham. It says that then the Lord appeared to Abram and said, I will give this land to your descendants. And Abram built an altar there and dedicated it to the Lord who had appeared to him. Notice Abram had God appear to him. Think about that. And if you were to, of course, back up a little bit in his story, you would know that God had already told him to leave his family, leave his old life, and go into a new life that God had for him. Well, here God appears to him in that land, and God gives him some more instruction. He really gives him more information 
about his future. Up until this point, God had told him that he would be made a great nation, but God didn't tell him he was going to give him this land. Now God appears to him. He has a faith experience and God reveals to him this land that you're standing on is going to be your land. Well, also in Genesis chapter 28, we can read about uh, one of his descendants named Jacob. And in Genesis 28 and verse 12, it says that as he slept, he dreamed of a stairway that reached from the earth up to heaven. And he saw the angels of God going up and down the stairway. And at the top of the stairway stood the Lord. I mean, oh, that's a faith experience, right? What's more, I am with you, the Lord said, and I will protect you wherever you go. And one day I will bring you back to this land. I will not leave you until I have finished giving you everything I have promised you. Isn't that a great promise right there? I won't leave you until I have finished giving you everything that I promised you. I'm thanking God that that's true of me as well. Then Jacob awoke from his sleep and said, surely the Lord is in this place. And I wasn't even aware of it. But he was also afraid and said, what an awesome place this is. It is none other than the house of God, the very gateway to heaven. You know, I've grown up a Star Wars fan. I love all the Star Wars movies. I know some people don't like the first ones or the last ones. I love them all. And one of the things I remember from Star Wars was in the second, the, the main movies, uh, Obi-Wan Kenobi showed up as a force ghost for Luke. And he showed up and he told him some very interesting information about his family. I won't spoil it for those who haven't seen it yet, even though it's been 40 years. But uh, that's how he got the information. And that seems to be similar to what happened here. Of course, this was real. God appeared to Abram and gave him some information that, that was new to him. And the same thing happened with Jacob, where he had a dream from God. God actually showed up in his dream, and God also gave him some information about his life, new insight into his future. And so we can see here that one of the benefits of having a faith experience is that God will give you new insight into your life or into your future. And that's one reason why God wants us to have faith experiences because he has things that he wants to reveal to us. In Exodus chapter three, we see another faith experience. And this of course is talking about Moses. In verse two, it says, there the angel of the Lord appeared to him. There it is again, he appeared, another faith experience, in a blazing fire from the middle of a bush. Moses stared in amazement. Though the bush was engulfed in flames, it didn't burn up. If you jump over to, if you keep reading, excuse me, it says, when the Lord saw Moses coming to take a closer look, God called to him from the middle of the bush, Moses, Moses. Here I am, Moses replied. Of course, God gave him some instructions and later on he said, now go for I am sending you to Pharaoh. You must lead my people out of Egypt. Notice that God appeared to Moses, gave him a faith experience. And once again, this was a life altering event for, for a man of God. And in this case, God gave him direction. There was something in particular God wanted him to do. And that was to leave the life that he was in and to go to Egypt, ultimately with the goal of leading God's people out of Egypt. And of course, we know the story that he did what God told him to do. But all this was kickstarted by God appearing to him as a burning bush. You know, in my bedroom at home, we have a I guess you can call it a fireplace. It's not the real thing. It's a it's kind of made. It's it's been produced by man. But I can't imagine turning that on. And then all of a sudden it's starting to talk to me. I mean, how many know that would get your attention? That would get my attention. How much more sitting outside just taking care of your sheep or your flocks and and all of a sudden a, a bush starts burning and starts talking to you. That's what's happened to Moses. And it changed his life. In Acts chapter 13, we see the same type of thing actually happening to Paul and Barnabas. It says in verse two that one day as these men were worshiping the Lord and fasting, the Holy Spirit said, appoint Barnabas and Saul for the special work to which I have called them. Now, if we were to back up in Acts chapter 13, we know that these men were having a small group meeting. They had come together to pray. They had come together to fast. I really believe they must have been led by the Holy Spirit to do this. They probably sensed that something was up in their hearts. And so as they prayed and fast, the Holy Ghost spoke through one of them. They had, once again, a faith experience where God has now shown up and God is now speaking. And God gave them direction as well. 
up to this point, Paul had, in particular had been helping a church in Antioch. That had been his assignment. And it appears that he had in his heart that God wanted him to do more, but it wasn't time yet. But now the Holy Spirit is saying, it's time. He's saying, I want you to do, have them do the special work that I have called them to do. In other words, I've already told them about that, but now I want them to actually do it. And so when they had this faith experience, it led to them receiving direction from God. And as they followed that direction, God did amazing things. Of course, we know about what God did through Paul. We know that he impacted the world. But once again, what kind of kickstarted that was a faith experience, a moment in time where they experienced the God of the Bible in a supernatural way. Well, let's go on to Mark chapter five. Let's see another example of someone having a faith experience. In Mark chapter five and verse two, it reads that when Jesus climbed up out of the boat, a man possessed by an evil spirit came out from the tombs to meet him. This man lived in the burial caves and could no longer be restrained, even with a chain. Whenever he was put into chains and shackles, as he often was, he snapped the chains from his wrist and smashed the shackles. No one was strong enough to subdue him, and day and night he wandered among the burial caves and in the hills, howling and cutting himself with sharp stones. And when Jesus was still some distance away, the man saw him, ran to meet him, and bowed low before him. Later on, we read that a crowd soon gathered around Jesus, and they saw the man who had been possessed by the legion of demons. He was sitting there fully clothed and perfectly sane, and they were all afraid. This man has gone from being possessed by a demon, having a supernatural demonic strength that would break off shackles, not just handcuffs because they're too thin, shackles, to howling and cutting himself. He went from that to sitting there clothed and in his right mind. What happened in between? A faith experience. He ran into Jesus and Jesus commanded those demons out of him. If you read the story, you know that he had a legion of demons that were in him. And when Jesus commanded those demons to leave, they left and the man was entirely and completely delivered. So much so that when Jesus left, he wanted to go with him to be one of his disciples to serve him, help him reach more people. Here's a great example of a faith experience. One of the great things that happens when God shows up in, in someone's life, this man was delivered from Satan's attack in his life. Sometimes, you know, we find ourselves bound with all kinds of things. We have sickness in our bodies or we've got financial issues. We've got emotional issues. We may find ourselves being addicted to things. And a faith experience can be the very thing God uses to deliver you. One of the things I've been privileged to do over the years is just lay hands and pray on a lot of different people. And so I've seen story after story. I've heard story after story of people being healed from different diseases that they faced because of that faith experience. I'm sure watching this, there are many people that could say, yeah, I remember when God showed up in my life and he set my child free or he healed my body or he gave me that wisdom that I needed or he did something to help me to live the life God actually wanted me to have. One of my favorite parts of what we just finished talking about is the fact that when these men had faith experiences, they would actually build altars for that in that spot where God showed up to them. In our church, our logo has an X in it. We like to talk about that X represents where we had our faith experiences and how we want to draw X's all over our houses and X's all over Metro Detroit. And I believe that God wants you drawing some X's in your life as well. He wants you having faith experiences. He wants you being able to look back and say, this is the moment, this is the time where God showed up and gave me the wisdom that I need or the answer that I need or the healing that I need. And you can have that. You just have to draw closer to God. You've got to make a decision that I'm going to be closer to God than I am anything else. I'm going to be closer to God than I have ever been in my life. And when you make that decision, you'll discover that God will come close to you. You'll have faith experiences. I think about the guy in the Bible in Genesis chapter five by the name of Enoch, who the Bible says walked in habitual fellowship with God. He was close to God and he was raptured. The first person raptured in the Bible was Enoch because of how close he was to God. We're not expecting to be raptured today, although hopefully it will be soon. 
but we are expecting God to do great things in our lives. And the way that happens is when we draw close to God and we stay there. Let's go back and hear some more of what God has for us today. So many people in the Bible had faith experiences with Jesus and he changed their lives. And God wants to do the same thing for you. He wants you to have faith experiences with him so that you can be free from sickness and disease and depression and heartbreak and addictions. And you can have that right now. Faith experiences in the Bible actually lead to people being encouraged. They actually lead to people having strength. They lead to people having healing and freedom. I mean, it just caused so many great things to happen. But there is something that you need to do so that God can show up in your life. And I want to look at that in Jeremiah 29 and verse 13. It says, and you shall seek me and find me when you shall search for me with all your heart. Notice what God said to Jeremiah or to the people of God through Jeremiah. They were in a very difficult time. They had, because of their sin, uh, been enslaved. And God had let them know they're going to be there for about 70 years. And then he gave them one of my favorite scriptures about God wanting to give you the future that you hope for. But then he told them the key to having that future was that they would seek him and find him when they searched for him with all their heart. I want you to notice that all your heart. Why is that important? Because God wants your heart. I love what the Bible says in the Hosea chapter 6 and verse 6, the message translation. It says, I'm after love that last, not more religion. I want you to know God, not go to more prayer meetings. Now, it's not that God doesn't want us to go to prayer meetings. It's just that God wants us to know him and that is the goal of the prayer meeting. That is the goal of spending time reading your Bible or spending time and in, in going to church is God wants you to have an actual relationship with him. Let's zoom in again on what we read in Jeremiah 29, where God said that you will seek me and you will find me when you search for me with all your heart. So he didn't say you'll find what I have, or what I offer. You'll find me. He's talking about relationship. And so God wants you to seek him with your heart. He wants you to come close to him. We started off in James chapter four, right? Come close to God and he'll come close to you. The way you come close to him is not through your actions. It's not through going to church or watching a broadcast or reading your Bible. Those things are, are, are part of it, but it's doing those things with your heart. And it's when you come close to him with your heart that God comes close to you and you get that wisdom, you get that direction, you get that freedom that you need from God. But the key is you've got to do this with your heart. Most of us have had a loved one or a friend deal with some type of sickness or disease and, and decided, man, we need to find an answer for this. I know as a parent, I've done this from time to time where my children have felt or have dealt with something and I, I decide I got to Google it. I got to go online and see, you know, what's out there about this. And when you really care about the person, you really care about your loved one, you will really put the time in. I mean, you will really search. I'm the type of person who really likes to research things. That's just how I'm wired is I, I, I like to get a whole lot of information. So when I dive into something, I really dive into it with everything I have. And you, I think you get that. We need to have that mentality when it comes to God. We need to have the mentality where I'm not just kind of doing my God thing. So I've kind of paid my penance, done what I'm supposed to do so I can get back to my real life. No, we need to have the mentality that Paul had in Colossians where he said Christ is our life. He's not your Sunday morning. He's not your ambulance. He is your life. He's someone you're loving with all of your heart as well as your soul and your might. He's someone that you really are in love with and you're living for. And Jesus mentioned something along these lines in Matthew chapter 15, where he talked about how there were some during his time who would praise God with their lips. But he said, your heart is far from me. So your praise, your worship is in vain. You're wasting your time. God doesn't want us wasting our time faking it. He doesn't want us living life faking it as Christians. He wants us faith in it. He wants us actually with our hearts engaging with God choosing to be close to him. The Bible talks about a man in Genesis chapter five by the name of Enoch. 
And it says that he was not. He was raptured. He was the first person in the history of man who went to heaven, right? Who was raptured to heaven. The first one. And there are a number of raptures in the Bible. But what does it take to be the first? Well, the Bible says he walked in habitual fellowship with God. He was God's hanging buddy. He was someone that stayed close to God, clearly with his heart, because God rewarded him by making him the first raptured man. What are you trying to say, Pastor Andre? I'm trying to let you know that God wants your heart today. Maybe you're someone who does not follow God and God is saying, hey, I love you and I want the real you to follow me. I've got something that's so much better for you. Maybe you're somebody that is following God, but you're kind of doing it from a distance. You're going through the motions, but your heart really isn't into it. And maybe you're somebody that really is following God with all of your heart. You've been doing it for a while, but you know what? You kind of fall into a routine. And so sometimes when you pray, you're not really there. Sometimes when you go to church, you're not really listening. Sometimes when you read your Bible, you're just kind of going through the motions. Whoever you are, whatever state you're at, God wants your heart. He wants you to truly, with all of your heart, love him and seek him. And when you do that, man, he honors that. He causes faith experiences to happen in your life. You get wisdom, you get encouragement, you get strength, you get freedom, you get healing, you get whatever it is that you need from God. If you open and fully engage your heart, if you have ears to hear, right, when you're approaching or encountering God, whether it's his presence, whether it's his teaching or his time with his people, you will have a faith experience every time. You know what? God's waiting for you. He's waiting for you to say, all right, God, I'm here. All right, God, you can have all of me, all of my heart, all of my life. And if you'll give him that, you'll see that you can really live an amazing life that life with God is so much better than life without God, that the future God has for you is so much better than the future you can create for yourself. I want to end by reading to you from Joel chapter 2, something that God said to those individuals there. They had kind of gotten away from God. They were doing things their own way, and so they saw some negative results in their lives, and God was finally able to get their attention. And he said to them in verse 12, Turn to me now while there is time. Give me your hearts. Come with fasting, weeping, and mourning. Don't tear your clothing in your grief, but tear your hearts instead. Return to the Lord your God, for he is merciful and compassionate, slow to get angry, and filled with unfailing love. Notice what God said to them. He said, give me your heart. He said, don't, don't just tear your clothes. That was a religious act that they would do when they were upset about something. It was a way of, of showing that they were in grief or they, they, grieved, they were grieving about something that might have uh, dishonored God. But he's saying, I don't want you just going through the motions. I want you to tear your heart. I want you to actually repent and come home to me. And if you keep reading in Joel chapter 2, you'll find that he tells them that when you do that, I'll cause you to eat and be plenty again. I'll cause you to have restoration of, from all the things that you lost, all that you lost over the years. I'll bring it all back into your life, all because you chose to give me your heart. I don't know what you, where you are in your life right now, but I can tell you God loves you. And I can tell you that God wants you to be close to him. God wants it more than you realize. That's why he created you. It wasn't just so that you can do something for him. It wasn't just so he can do something for you. God wanted a family. That's why he made Adam. That's why he made Eve. That's why he made you. He wants you to walk with him, to be his friend, to know him just like he knows you. And if you'll give that to him, you'll find your life will be enriched. Your life will be so blessed. You will truly experience the amazing future that God has for you. I hope that really helped you. I hope you saw that God really, really wants you to be close to him. And that is when you're close to him that he can bring about the lasting change that you want in your life. And there are a few things that we said that I want to review with you because I think it's the key to everything that we've been talking about. Number one, you can get close to God right now. Number two, God wants you closer to Him. Number three, you are as close to God as you choose to be. 
And number four, God can do more in your life than he is right now. It's entirely up to you. You see, God is waiting to get involved in your life on another level, but he needs you to get involved in the relationship he has with you. Christianity is not a religion. It's a relationship with a living God who loves you so much that he gave the son to die for you and to rise again simply so he could call you a son or a daughter. And so since that's true, wouldn't it be true that God wouldn't want you going through the motions? He doesn't want you half-heartedly doing anything spiritual, half-heartedly going to church, reading your Bible, praying, or even listening to a message like this. He wants your whole heart involved in anything you do that's related to Him. So I wanna challenge you to actually do that, to love God with all of your heart, to open your heart to whatever He has to say. When you open the Bible or you hear a message or you go to God in prayer or you even pray for other people, and when you do that, you will please God and you'll have faith experiences. Moments in time where the God of the Bible will show up in your life in a supernatural way. Now I wanna ask you to pray about becoming a partner with Andre Butler Ministries. Our mission is to help people who are far from God experience the future God has for them. And we wanna reach millions for Jesus, but we can't really do that without your help. So I would love for you to pray about becoming a partner with us, becoming a part of our faith family as we do everything we can to reach those who are far from Him. And if you're interested in becoming a partner or you just want some information, I would love for you to text this number, 313-356-3366. Or you can go to our website, andrebutler.com. I'm excited about what God has done today, and what God's gonna do in your life as you get closer to Him. And I want you to remember that He loves you very much and that God has a future for you. I'm excited about my newest book, Why Exist, Find Your Why. You know, I believe life doesn't really make sense until you know your why, until you know your purpose. And so God had me write a book to help people to discover not only that you have a purpose, but to discover what it is. One of my favorite parts of this book is a chapter called The Why Test, where we ask you certain questions to help you zoom in on what excites you, on what God made you to do. So I really want to encourage you to get a hold of this at andrebutler.com and find your why.